Hello everyone and welcome back. Well, here's my new splitter I finally got. Well, it's pretty much done. I gotta redo some some things on it, but uh, get it painted and stuff. But yeah, this splitter was built to replace this one. And there is nothing wrong with the splitter. This splitter works fine. It's just I wanted a little more capacity, bigger table, hydraulic wedge. I wanted it faster. And I was pretty limited with this thing, so I started from scratch. So with my new splitter, there's two proof of concept ideas I wanted to try that I don't believe I've seen anybody else do. One was, if you haven't noticed, you don't see a hydraulic tank on this. The hydraulic tank is the beam. The beam is half inch plate on three sides and the top is three quarter. And it has two engines, two 28 gallon a minute pumps, two auto return valves, a flow control valve that feeds a four way loader valve with the loader valve float is log lift down, log lift up, hydraulic wedge down, hydraulic wedge up. Uh, eliminate one lever there. So you're probably wondering why I went with two engines instead of one big one. Well, it comes down to cost and cycle times. So just from a numbers perspective, these two engines, the two engines, the two pumps, the two Lovejoy coupling sets, the pump mounts, the two auto cycle valves. I got $2,300 in all that and that is 36 horse moving 56 gallons of oil. And a good thing with, or um, a nice feature to having these two engines is I got redundancy. Um, if I'm just by myself and trying to save fuel, I can just go down to run in one engine. If I got some help or I'm in some good wood, I can kick on the other engine. And the cycle time is extremely fast with both engines running on this. It's about four and a half seconds and that's the full 30 inch stroke of this five inch cylinder. So it can, it can really pound out some wood if you can feed it. So building this from scratch, there was a couple other ideas. Uh, what I did here is that top, the top plate is three quarter and then I added another three quarter by three. Uh, two things, it gives it some um, more surface area to resist the twists what this brass and bronze can ride against. Kind of develops a cradle for the wood. So there's, this top is 12 inches wide. So the whole plate is 15 inches wide. Uh, it's 12 inches high, 12 inches long, three quarter inch bolts, all bronze and brass inch and a half on the sides here. Uh, it's still a 30 inch stroke. I finally got my hydraulic wedge here. That's a two by 12 cylinder on there. So looking at the wedge here, um, this is all built out of 1055 uh, beveled edge steel. It's like a weld on cutting edge stuff. And what I did is I, the main beam is laminated. It's the center piece is three quarter and the two side pieces are half inch. I welded them side bevels on there and you can see the weld seam and then I put it in the mill and with a three inch uh, carbide, I faced it off at an angle. It's about total length, I think it's like 23 inches. Uh, the floating or the adjustable wedge is made out of the same stuff. Uh, it's 1055, but I designed it a little different. That that wedge, I I put the wings down at the bottom for the fact that sometimes when you want to just break some big pieces in half, I don't have to take the wedge off. And the other ones is you can't raise them high enough. So with it set towards the bottom and it actually goes below them three quarter inch guides there. 
I can break big ones in two halves and then bring them back around and then I can start using the four way or the six way the way I got the the two wings underneath it kind of makes it like a box wedge. So staying true to my design I like the fold down table it just seems to make the thing a lot more compact. So what I got in here This table's pretty beefy. It's a lot stronger uh, than my one I made on my Rugged Made. It is, uh, the main piece is 48 inches wide. Uh, the flat piece and the wings are six inches, I believe. What this is pivoting on, right here, I don't know how well you can see them. Them are Category 1 uh, repair links for three points on tractors. Uh, that worked really well. I actually used, you'll see some more, I used some more on the log lift pivots. So the tongue is telescoping and I made this one removable so I can take it around back and hook it on the back side to pull it out of a pile. So we got here on the uh, log lift, um, yeah, special thanks to Mr. Andrew Easton. Um, I liked his design that he had on that for the free, fro uh, free float fl uh, floating of the log lift with the roller. Yeah, it works pretty good. Uh, the only thing is, I, I don't like how far it sticks out. And then when it's down, it's pretty close to the ground. So I just always got to remember to leave it up like that. But usually when I'm transporting it, I put it up that far and then pick the log lift up the rest of the way. So here's them other category one uh, three-point repair links. You just weld them on. So that's what I use too for the the uh, log lift pivot. Uh, they they work well. They're plenty heavy duty enough. I ain't got to worry about that. So yeah, here there's the other ones in there for the table pivot. So here's the secondary engine it's identical to the first one or the primary engine so there's the four-way valve feeding the log lift cylinder and the wedge cylinder so we come around here 28 gallon a minute pumps um, same on both motors you got a dual or a tandem filter set up here um, all this stuff I got from pretty much from surplus center except for the dump valve that come from easy or split easy I believe it was so here's kind of a look at the beam I had a hydraulic leak the other day on one of these fittings up top so I thought I wiped that up a little better than that well there's the receiver for the hitch if I bring it around back so the unique design about this beam, it's, uh, it's about eight and a half inches wide outside. Uh, it's, it's boxed with half inch plate. So this elbow down here, that is the return line off the dump valve, that's one inch. The normal return line through these uh, two filters, actually it goes in the tank, makes a 90, and runs all the way up to about right where the oh right where them hoses are and it's got a long sweep 90 so the purpose of that is I don't have an oil cooler on this I'm banking on that the beam is going to be able to, to absorb and distribute a lot of the heat out of the oil so when the oil gets returned in there it goes all the way up to the front of the beam dumps in and then it's got to run all the way back to the two suction strainers down here on the bottom. So there's a sight gauge with the oil level in there. It's got 30 gallons in there. Um, it's probably got a room for another five easy. So here's the fill point. There's the other suction strainer. These are just staggered a little bit. Uh, they go 
crisscross and the beam they sit on the bottom down there. So I got a drain. I got an auxiliary port here, inch and a half. Then I got a drain port on the bottom too. The beam, or the axle I should say, is just eight by eight by quarter. And just little short pieces of the same square tubing are what is what the engines are sitting on. And then by doing that, using that bigger piece of box square tubing, I picked up a set of these stub uh, 3,500 pound torsion axles and I could bolt them up inside on the top of the beam. The thing is, is I wanted to keep the deck height on here around at least less than 36. I think it's about 32 inches. Uh, it's about three inches, I think, higher than what the rug and made is. But it's comfortable. It's, uh, it's a very comfortable height. So electric start is hooked up on both of these motors. Uh, that works fine. So what we got here is we got two auto return or auto cycle valves. Being that both ones of these, these pumps are 28 gallons a minute, I can't force that through one uh, valve. So I broke it into two valves, uh, made my uh, T manifolds for the return. I had to weld a couple extra bungs on this cylinder to accept uh, one for the dump valve, another one for the auxiliary auto cycle valve. Um, base port and then the rod port. So for one of these engines to work at a time um, I had to put inline check valves so no pressure would push backwards onto the other pump when it wasn't running on a motor and it, the proof of concept it, it does work good and it seems to work fine. So with this being the primary valve here. So coming out of that, I uh, out of the Power Beyond port, I installed this flow control. So out of here, I have a way to um, supply oil to this four-way valve for the log lift and hydraulic wedge. And by using that, that allows less uh, restriction on the hydraulic system. This is the bypass hose and this is the CF, the controlled flow. That's the one that goes to the valve. This has a 1 to 10 setting on this little arm. Being this is a 20, this valve is rated for 30 GPM and I got it set at, it's about set on the 1 to 2 setting. If I move this up to 10, I can actually flip that log lift right over and catch it. Um, and then the wedge is just crazy fast so <laughs> you'll see when I start it up I can I can adjust it around but it works really good right there and by having this I'm not lugging these motors down I'm not trying to divert the full flow of the pump to go through this valve body which is only I think it's 10 or 15 gallons a minute rated oh but what I got to redo I got to redo this uh, linkage here my pivot points are I, I was shaking my head. This is something I built about 12:45 at night, thinking what in the hell. And I just wanted to do some group think or something. And it's just stupid. It works, but it's going to get redone. But for the experiment I've been doing, it's it's worked fine. So that's kind of an overview. Um, I'm going to set the camera up, and we're going to run it through some uh, cycles here, and you get an idea how it works.